this is cyber power of the gray uh yeah uh good afternoon our audience uh i have dr galadios araya with me today uh welcome uh dr galadios araya to this show thank you mr Ephraim. thank you for seeing you again <laughs> all right this is uh as you know this is our uh, uh we had uh, an amharic interview uh just a few minutes uh, uh ago and we are continue uh, to have uh, a discussion about the current situation of Ethiopia in English program. And we will uh, uh, tweet and uh, broadcast this to everyone who speaks English and who wants to understand about uh, East Africa and the Ethiopia political situation in the war. Uh, thank you again. Uh, so my first question is, um, uh, our topic is today, what the world should know about the war in Ethiopia and the plight of the people of Tigray. Uh, as you know, Dr. Galadios, uh, um, uh, the people of Tigray is in a siege humanitarian, uh, 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 bad humanitarian crisis, and the war is still uh, going on under, uh, uh, well, the TDF is like, you know, uh, doing all the, try to open all the sieges uh, to have the humanitarian access. And also, <clears throat> there are multiple uh, political uh, crises going on in East Africa, like in Sudan, uh, there is a, a government coup is going on right now. And then also, about regarding all this Ethiopian political situation in the East Africa, there are some uh, involvement the entire world, uh, in, including the Security Council and the House Resolution has passed already the HR 4, 445. So what's what's your point of view in this the entire East African political and the situation in the war? Thank you. Okay. That, that, that's that, that's a fair fair and uh uh interesting question. So what I like to do is actually I'm going to address uh, the three of them uh what the world should know about the current situation in Ethiopia, uh, crisis as a whole, and of course uh, the situation, the the realities in the uh, of uh, integrai uh, at this uh, point of time, uh, it's obvious to everybody, the whole world should know, and the people know, the United States Congress know, the British Parliament know very well and the Irish parliament know very well the situation in Tigray. People are starving in Tigray. Uh, communications are cut off, all sorts of communications. Electricity, internet, banks are closed, roads are closed. There is no way uh, uh, aid uh, could actually reach uh, the people of Tigray. The people of Tigray are in dire situation, very dire situation really. So it's actually it's actually uh, an urgent matter that uh, we have to reach out the people of Tigray at this juncture of their history. They need our help uh, right now, right at this moment. So uh, uh, whatever they do, whether it's airdrop, that's what I suggested last time. If roads are closed, the other option is airdrop aid. The uh, United Nations uh, uh, World Food Program tried last time, which I appreciate very much. It uh, actually was flying toward the Ras Alula airport in Makale, but it was distracted by the Abi Ahmed bombardment of Makale, so they could have they could not do anything about it. Uh, anyway. They have to continue to do so. I, either they have to drop food and medicine from air, or they have to go back and fly to uh, the Mecca airport, as they have tried before. Mm -hmm. This is one thing they have to do. Uh, uh, time is of the essence in order to rescue the people from total starvation and famine and millions of people actually can die in Tigray. Having said that, uh, uh, 
uh, I would like to address the House Resolution uh, 445 that came out today. Actually, it's an amended version of the House Resolution uh, <coughs> of 445. This is not a new thing, but it was amended uh, to address the current situation in the whole of Ethiopia. So I would like to read that one briefly. It's a long one, but I just have a paragraph here that I want to read so that the audience can benefit. Okay. From what are we talking about? Great. So House Foreign Affairs Committee, October 25, 21, the House Foreign Affairs Committee passed an amended version of House Resolution 445, condemning all violence and human rights abuses in Ethiopia and calling for all combatants in the conflict in Northern Ethiopia to cease hostilities. Representative Karim Bass actually said, she's the one who is leading the, uh, who led uh, the resolution. She said, I led the resolution because I wanted to see a peaceful negotiated solution to this multi-faceted conflict that is complicated by ethnicity, politics, and history. In addition, she said, the TPLF must end the use of child soldiers pull its forces from the Amahara and its alliance with Oele Shene, an armed rebel faction of the Oromo Liberation Army. This is to just put it in a concise manner because I cannot go in detail. We don't have time for that. And the, uh, the objective of this uh, program is to address certain themes uh, that can reflect the realities on the ground, okay? So uh, interestingly, uh, it's the same thing they repeat and repeat again. However, I was dismayed by the fact that uh, the HR 445 said that uh, the Tigray Defense Forces are using child soldiers, which actually is not true. It's not true at all. I'm not trying to defend the TPLF or the TDF, but from what I know, they don't have child soldiers. In fact, on the contrary, child soldiers were <laughs> captured in the war from the, the government side. 15 year old children were caught. Two of them have seen them being interviewed. The other thing they say actually is they have to pull out from them. What the hell is going on here? This is a civil war going on in Ethiopia now. They have not gone to a neighboring country or invaded another territory. This is within Ethiopia itself. And it's not TDF alone now. They just single out the TPLF. They keep on saying TPLF, TPLF all the time. At least they have to say TPLF slash TDF, at least even if they don't want to mention the other uh, uh, allied forces, a united front, they've now forged a united front. Uh, a group of Ethiopian federalist forces have forged a united front recently. And they are actually fighting side by side the government of Abiy Ahmed. And then uh, 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 the United the United States Congress and other, other politicians should really understand that there is the Ago group, the Kamant group, the Benishangul group, the Afar group, the Somali group, the Sidama group, and the Orom, of course. These are all Ethiopians. So it's not TDF alone. By the way, they... Uh, they put this uh, unnecessary adjective uh, actually uh, given to them by the government. They call them Shene to the Oromo. They don't call themselves Shene, they are Oromo Liberation Army. Oromo Liberation Army, that's their name. 
if you say Junta to the TPLF, it's not going to make sense at all. Yeah, it's been it's, it's been a culture labeling labeling uh, parties. Let, in, uh, so they say they say profiling. Junta, profiling yeah, they say Junta. They say whatever, and the, the, the government, mm -hmm. the so-called government of Ethiopia, mm -hmm. by led by Abiy Ahmed, actually say these are terrorist groups. Terrorist groups. <laughs> He's the one who is a terrorist, terrorizing the people, bombarding them. Mm -hmm. uh, if you bombard people, you are a terrorist, number one, as a matter of fact. But anyway, uh, uh, instead of simply confining ourselves to what is happening in Ethiopia, we have to have a look at the neighboring country as well, the one he mentioned. There is Today, a military coup in Sudan. A military coup in Sudan. Sudan, I'm not surprised about that, by the way, because Sudan, the Su Sudan is one of the few Af African countries that have had more than 10 coup d'etat in its history. Actually, there were 15 coup d'etats uh, in, uh, in the history of Sudan, starting from Abdul, the first, the first president way back in 1956. There were so many of them. So in fact, I, I remember very well, uh, the Sudanese themselves saying, if you get up early in the morning, you can have a government. You can form your own government. They used to say the Sudanese jokingly. So uh, now what happened is, uh, you see, after they removed, uh, uh, what's his name, his uh, Bashir, uh, in 2019, uh, they formed actually a civilian and military government. This was a civilian military government. They had to do it like civilian government because the demonstrators back in 2019 demanded that the military should share power with the civilian Sudanese. So it was a military civilian thing. But more and more, the military, uh, because they have guns, you remember, more and more they were uh, uh, getting the upper hand in the government, more and more. So today, uh, of course, what happened was, uh, uh, this was actually a, a statement made from General Abdel Fattah, Abdel Rahman Burhan. Uh, and he is actually saying, okay, we're going we're gonna to do another election in, in July 2023. <laughs> 2023. They put, uh, they put uh, uh, Abdullah Hamdak, the prime minister, the other ministers behind bars. We don't know where they are now. We don't exactly know where they are. So a real coup d'etat took place in Sudan today. So we have, we're gonna have a new government. I don't know how they're gonna form that government. It could be uh, singularly military. They may have some civilians for sure, but uh, we don't exactly know uh, the nature or characteristics of that, that uh, uh, <coughs> forthcoming government in Sudan. We we'll probably know by tomorrow or after tomorrow, in a couple of days, what they're going to do. But uh, uh, now, they have the, the minister, the minister, former prime minister, and the other ministers are uh, under the custody of the military. So the military is in control. That means General Abdel Fattah Abdel Rahman Burhan. And uh, the international community is really concerned now. Not only Europeans, Egypt itself is concerned because Sudan is an ally of Egypt in many, many ways uh, uh, regarding the uh, Ethiopian Grand Renaissance Dam. Egypt needs Sudan. Otherwise, it's not going to fulfill its goals. Uh, so, so, so many things are going to go in there, but it, the, what happened in Sudan 
indirectly is going to affect us. This, this is obvious because a neighboring country, uh, and especially for Tigray, it's uh, once they open the corridor via Humra uh, to Sudan and to central Tigray, they have to deal with the government of Sudan, obviously. So uh, it's going to affect them directly. Uh, and uh, Ethiopia is going to be affected too. I mean, the government of Ethiopia, I mean, is going to be affected by that. So we're going to wait and see what's going to happen. And then after that, maybe we, you know, uh, this is ju it just happened today. Both the House Resolution Committee and the coup d'etat took place today. So we cannot say much about it. Right. But that's how I view it, okay? All right. Well, thank you so much uh, for your time. And uh, we will have another uh, discussion regarding the political situation and the current situation of the Sudan, not only the Sudan, only Ethiopia, but the East African uh, political crisis yes, in the world. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, please tweet and share this uh, great idea with your local representatives and uh, world leaders. Okay, um, Mr. Refran, thank you so much. I appreciate it.